Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Today we're looking at miking up a snare drum. We're using the same mic in four different positions and seeing what the difference in sound is. Let's get straight to it. I'm going to play you the individual tracks at the moment, then we can listen to it in the mix, and then we'll hear what the differences are when we discuss it a bit further. Let's take a look. So the differences there are a lot more pronounced when it's soloed than they are when it's in the mix. So let's take a listen to them soloed and dig into these. The first microphone that we have here, SM57-1, this is the one that is directly down on the rim. This is kind of pointing across the drum. I've tried to get them all about the same distance away from the actual center of the drum, and it's the angle and the height that is varying. So this is the first one that you see in the picture, and this is the closest to the drum. The second one, this is the uh, second one, the one to the right of that mic, and this is slightly higher and angled slightly more down. And as we go up the microphones, we get progressively higher and we get progressively more angled down until we get to number four, which is quite high off the drum and angled down at the center of the drum, as, as they all are. Now, what I notice immediately from the first microphone is that we get far more thump out of it from that proximity effect because the microphone is closer to the snare drum, we get more low end, but we also get more ring. Let's take a listen to number one compared to number two. In number one, we'll hear more thump, but we'll hear more ring. As we go on to number two, that low end decreases slightly, but also the ring goes down. As we move on to number two, you start to get a little bit more spill from the hi-hat as well. That's because it's obviously a bit further away, so it's slightly closer to the hi-hat, but it's got more chance for that hi-hat spill to get in. And that becomes more apparent as we go on to numbers three and four. Number three and four, we will hear more hi-hat spill, and we will hear far less of that low-end thump, but we will hear far less ring as well. Let's take a listen. So this drum is a Ludwig Superphonic uh, 402. It's a 14 by six and a half. It's quite a deep drum and it's got quite a fair amount of bottom end to it as it is. So that first microphone is really bringing out that low end thump as well as the ring. Let's compare the first one with the second one now and we'll just hear the differences between those two. I'm just gonna unmute that section. So we're gonna first off hear the closest and flattest mic and then after those four bars, we're going to hear the furthest away microphone. These are kind of the two opposite ends of the spectrum. Quite a different sound there. If we bring up the EQ on both of these channels, this first EQ here is for the closest microphone, and then the second one here is for the furthest away microphone. If we just take a listen to both of the sections, the same section, so we're going to be seeing the EQ graph for both of them at the same time. Don't so much listen to it, just take a look at the graphs. The one on the left is the closest microphone, and the one on the right is the furthest away microphone. We're going to see a lot more thump in that channel number one than we are in number two but we may see a little more top end as it has a chance to develop in that mic number four. Let's take a listen now.
we can see as I've held the frequency analyzer on these two EQs, we can really tell the difference. On microphone number one, we are getting far more in that bottom end, and that is at around, let's see, 170 hertz. So we're getting far more in the bottom end on microphone number one. On microphone number four, we're still getting that around 170, but it's not quite up as high. So we're not gonna be getting that bottom end. In microphone number one, although we're not seeing it on this graph, we are getting that excess ring as well, which could be a problem. It's something that we're gonna to have to EQ out as we move into the mix, if it becomes too loud for us. Let's take a listen now with some processing on. Now I've used the Logic Stock Compressor just on the snare drum top preset, because it's as good a preset as any. And let's take a listen to how that changes the overall characteristic of each microphone and how it brings up any problems that we're gonna to need to get rid of as we move further through the mix. We can hear that the microphones that are the two extreme ends of the spectrum, number one, which is really close, and number four, which is far further away, we have artifacts that we're going to have to deal with. In number one, that ring really comes up, and we're gonna to have to EQ that out, which might not be what we want. So it's a trade-off. We do get that bottom end thump, but we have to deal with far more ring. As we move on to number four, we don't get as much bottom end, which we can EQ in afterwards, but we do get far more spill. So we might have to look at expanders or gates further down the line. So each has a trade-off, each has good parts and bad parts. A microphone that is far closer to the rim is gonna get more of the proximity effect. It's gonna benefit from that proximity effect and give you more low end thump. However, you're going to have to deal with more ring. As we move to number two and number three, these are kind of the best of both worlds. You get that bottom end thump, you get a little bit of ring, but you don't get too much. It's not as unmanageable as it is in number one. But as we move across the microphones, we get more spill. Number three has more spill than number two, but not as much as number four. Number four, which is much further away from the drum, is going to get far less of that proximity effect. It's going to get a bit more high-end snap as it's angling a bit further down at the drum. But we're going to get more of that spill in the snare drum. I hope this is useful to you when you're recording your snare drums. Go back and take a listen to them again and see which one is going to work best for your drum recording. Make sure you subscribe and hit like. I'll see you again. Take care.